Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And it is such a beautiful day outside. We went to brunch. I love Sundays. Sundays are my favorite day of the week. I've talked about that on my vlog a lot. Um, I just love that it's a day to kind of just relax and hang out and we go to brunch every Sunday Which is always fun and then we come home and my husband usually naps I think he's napping upstairs right now or watching TV and um, Then I usually make a couple of videos and then we hang out in the evening. It's just it's nice I love Sundays, you know kind of get you ready for the week and you get to just hang out and do gardening or whatever I was just on my back patio and I was like, okay, I want to figure out what I'm doing and um, with my backyard this year and I'm, you know if you've watched my vlog you know that I really want to do something with my back patio and really enjoy it this summer so we got new furniture last year so this year plants and all that kind of stuff um, so Sundays for me are also a day of reflection over the week that I've had as well as like what are some goals and things that I want to do or things I want to work on going into the next week and the way that I actually I think got started doing meditations on this channel I could be wrong but the way that I think I got started was that I read a meditation on a Sunday and I called them spiritual Sundays and I said that every Sunday I was going to do some kind of like spiritual talk on here or some kind of and, I, and that doesn't mean anything religious because I think there's a huge difference between religion and spirituality and you know in 12-step programs there's kind of like a joking saying that religion is for people that are, for, are afraid of going to hell and spirituality is for people that have already been there and and, and i by in i don't by any means mean anything offensive by that i highly respect anybody that goes to church goes to temple has their belief systems whatsoever i think you know as long as you're not hurting anybody i think that and it's a positive force of you know enforcement for you in your life i think that that's great but I do think that there's a difference between it. And I think for me, the difference is that spirituality is something that is of my soul. It is, you know, of who I am as a soul, not as a human being, if that makes sense. Um, that I'm very much, you know, a, a, a spiritual person having a human experience, if that makes sense. And so... Um, you know, the idea of spirituality is very interesting to me and I like to get spiritually centered, you know, every day of my life. That's why I do my prayers and meditations on a daily basis. That's why I, you know, aim for peace and serenity in my life. Like peace and serenity are paramount to me. Um, but, and, and, and they're not, a, they're not a luxury for me anymore in my life. Like there's something that I have to have to be able to deal with the rest of the things that happen. That's why I read so many of these books. And that's why I enjoy reading them on here. Sundays are good for me. Like, like, I don't even know that anybody in my life, like my husband or Tanya or anybody would know that that's what I do. But often on Sundays, you know, I'll take time in my car or I'll sit down and I'll just kind of think about the week that I had. And, you know, wh uh, what things could I have done better? What things could I have worked on? What was my part in certain things? Um, I take inventory over the week that I had. And then I kind of look at the week ahead. And I'm not talking about making lists of like, you know, cleaning the house and doing this and doing that. I'm talking about what do I really want the next week to look like? Like, who do I want to be as a human being? Do I need to work on being kind? Or do I need to work on smiling more? Do I need to interact with my husband more? You know, do I need to be more patient with my dogs? Uh, you know, do I need to reach out to some people that I haven't talked to in a while? You know, because I think often we'll say, oh, we haven't heard from Judy Smith or we haven't heard from Sally Jo or whatever. When the reality is we don't reach out to people as well sometimes. I have to be better at those things and I want to work on continuing to be the best version of myself that I possibly can be. So for me, I have to be aware of those things and awareness is key. And awareness is looking at the things that I didn't do the week before and maybe improving on them the week ahead. And so I like to do that on Sundays. I, I like to do that at the end of every night as well, which is why every night, you know, I do my prayers, my meditations and I do in, like a, you know, a little inventory before I go to bed on who I was that day. And still, I'm not, a, you know, like there's still, and today's uh, meditation is about imperfections. And still, I know it's hard to believe. I know many of you out there think that Peter Mon is perfect. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that. No, I, I'm not perfect. I, I, I have a few faults, just, just a few. I have many faults. I make mistakes all the time. You know, I think to err is human. I think that's what life is about. I think it's about falling on your face and making a fool of yourself and hurting people along the way and realizing that you can take that pain, you can take that hurt, you can take the scraped knees from falling down and you can have growing pains and you can grow into a better human being. I think that's what it's about. Very rarely in my life, and I will say I have met a few people like this, very rarely have I met people that I think act in a way that is so impressive upon me 
but they haven't gotten there by like not learning any mistakes, if that makes sense. Like I know a lot of people that I look up to that are role models to me, that are mentors to me, and they're, you know, they're usually people that nobody would ever guess. Like when people say like, who's one of your role models? If I said to you, well, so-and-so that goes to my home group that I've known for 20 years, like you guys wouldn't even know that. And if you said, well, why? And I'd say, well, I mean, you know, like, he has a great relationship with his wife, you know, he's very respectful of everybody, you know, like he, I, do you know what I mean? Like, and I'm just totally pulling this out of thin air. I'm making somebody up in my head, but like, you know, those are the people that are role models to me in my life today. Salt of the earth kind of people. Uh, I'm not super impressed by people that are up here. Like, unless there's a lot of humility that comes with that, because that's something that I like to constantly work on is humility. I think, you know, um, but we're going to talk about imperfection today, and I think the first rule of imperfection is realizing that you're not perfect, okay? And I think most of us know that, but then we beat ourselves up for not being perfect, you know? It's like, you know, we know we're going to screw up. We know that there are things about ourselves that we're not going to like, that we could work on physically, emotionally, anything, you know? But yet, those are the things that we pick apart ourselves for the most, which if you think about it, is really rather ridiculous because we know that we're not perfect. I mean, if I said to you, okay, in all honesty, do you think you're perfect, okay? Put you, you know, like, how do, you know, like, last moment of your life, do you think you're perfect? You would say, most, I think 100% of people out there would say, no, I know I'm not perfect, right? But then we beat ourselves up for not being perfect. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So let's talk about this today. Um, accepting imperfections, and this is from the Meditations for Living in Balance, Daily Solutions for People Who Do Too Much. Uh, this is why humility, the knowledge of our own imperfections, is so important. And that is why spirituality goes on and on and on. A never-ending adventure of coming to know ourselves, seeing ourselves clearly, learning to be at home with ourselves. Ernst Kurtz and Catherine Ketchum. There is a difference between seeing our imperfections as bad and seeing them as a, as a given of reality that offers us an opportunity. When we get caught in the myth of perfectionism, we see our faults as glaring and horrible reminders that we are not as we should be, that we have failed and are indeed ourselves failures. See? So true. Okay? The point of view doesn't leave much room for humility, forgiveness, love, acceptance, or growth. In short, this view is pretty self-destructive. Our imperfections are not the problem. Our attitude toward them is. This negative attitude toward the reality of imperfection is fertile ground for self-hate and negativism towards others. When we accept our imperfections, we can with humility participate in that never-ending journey of coming to know ourselves. To know ourselves, we need to be willing to drop the veils of illusion that we have wound about ourselves, give up our denial, and come to accept ourselves as we are. The irony is that as we accept ourselves as we are, we become freer to change and grow and become better than we are. Funny how it works. Take a little break each day to list what you see as your imperfections. Be aware of your attitude towards them. Practice exception. Now, uh, practice acceptance. I want to go back here and I want to read this last paragraph. When we accept our imperfections, we can, with humility, participate in that never-ending journey of coming to know ourselves. To know ourselves, we need to be willing to drop the veils of illusion that we have wound about ourselves, give up our denial, and come to accept ourselves as we are. The irony is that as we accept ourselves as we are, we become freer to change and grow and become better than we are. Not accepting who we are, but that acceptance makes us better than we are funny how it works. So when we stop beating ourselves up for not being these perfect, perfect examples of what the world should look like, which I have met a few people I, that think they're perfect or I think put out attitudes as if they're perfect, but they fall short of being perfect. And I hate to tell them, okay, that listen, you're just a human being like the rest of us, okay? You're not perfect and it's okay, right? But they come across as extremely arrogant or extremely cocky. And you know, sometimes it's funny to me, you know, with like people that are so angry or anger driven about somebody else's behaviors and whatever, you know, like I have a lot of opinions about the world. I don't think that would surprise anybody. And I think most of us do. And I think that's kind of what living in this world is, is fun about, you know? Or I think that's what's fun about living in this world is having opinions about things, right? But I, when people get so angry about stuff, it, it's, it's interesting to me because it's like the old saying is so true, you know, that when you're pointing a finger at somebody else, you're really pointing like three fingers back at you. You know, and I think that's so, or four fingers or whatever. Three. It's so interesting, isn't it? You know, that when you think about it, it's so true, right? 
But isn't it easier to point the finger and look at somebody else than look back at ourselves? I don't, like, who wants to do that? Who wants to look at all of your own imperfections, right? But if you really listen to this meditation, what it's saying is that when we look at those imperfections, when we look at those things about ourselves, and now some of the things about myself, yes, are very painful to look at, but other things, you know, are funny to me. Things that I have accepted over the years are now funny to me that I realize about myself, you know? Like, for example, like, back in the day, people would really, like, pick apart the fact that I go off on tangents, like I'm just doing right now, that I would go off on tangents, or I forget what I'm saying, or whatever, you know, like, or I talk over people, which I'm not proud of, you know, and those are things that I've worked on over the years, but when people would first point it out to me, it really upset me, I was like, I'm not that person, and you don't know me, it doesn't upset me today because I know it as being true, and now I can work on that and be a better person, and I think that us working on anything that's constructive criticism is great, right? And so when we accept our imperfections as they are, whether they're physical, whether they're emotional, whether they're spiritual, whatever, um, as being what they are, then we are allowed to work through them and say, yeah, I probably do have a few things to work on. I'm probably not perfect, you know? And I always think, like, I don't know, when I meet people and they're just very humble about the fact that they screw up and they make mistakes or they'll tell stories of that. Like, I'm just like, that's so endearing to me, you know? It's just, it's so relatable. I love that when I find that about people. So, anyway, you know, I think most of us are just out here trying to do our best, trying to have the best life that we possibly can, screwing up, making mistakes, beating ourselves up because, you know, like, let's just say growing up, it's because I don't look this way or I don't look that way or, you know, whatever. And, you know, and then you get older and it's, I don't have this job or I don't have this car or I don't have that house or, you know, they don't get angry and I do or, you know what I mean? Like, or they have a boyfriend and I don't, you know what I mean? Like we, it's constantly, and it's also that thing, like we're always going to lose by comparison, which is ridiculous. But I think we take our comparison of other people to us and we look at it as an imperfection where we look at things that, you know, we're not happy with, whether it's our body image or whether it's something about ourselves and the reality is this is who we are. This is what we were given. You do with what you're given, you know, on all levels. That doesn't mean that you can't work on it. That doesn't mean that, you know, you can't change things. I'm not happy with my weight. I haven't been, so I got a personal trainer and I'm on a diet, right? And uh, hopefully it works for me this time. And my level of commitment to it will be up to me. You know what I mean? So if I want that to change, if I'm not happy on it, I have to change that. But that doesn't mean that I can't accept things for how they are and realize that I'm not perfect and that's going to be a struggle for me. And then turn that into a teaching moment and help somebody else with it that can relate to it. And that's what we should be doing instead of beating ourselves up about it, you know? So anyway, I think it's all hard. I think in our private moments, you know, going to sleep at night or standing in the bathroom, like that's where it happens for me the most. You know, it's like staying in the bathroom getting, if you ever stood in front of that mirror and you just pick yourself apart to death, like literally, you know, you look at every line around your eyes and, you know, you look at yourself with, you know, naked or whatever and you're like, you just pick yourself apart. For what point? What do, how does that do us any good whatsoever? You know, to say, hey, like maybe I need to, if, I, if you don't care, if you care about the wrinkles, maybe I want to use a little eye cream. Maybe I want to go get a little touch up done. You know, maybe I if, I, if I'm not happy with my body, maybe I need to go to the gym. But to beat ourselves up for it, what for? We're here but for a moment. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow.